the local government is the first point of interaction with government. It is one of the largest, perhaps the oldest, amongst the most beautiful, and one of the richest in terms of human, material, and natural resources. And yet, it is the most neglected. This is the story of a local government area with some recorded achievements on the one hand and a criminally unacceptable neglect on the other. Where the change must start from is at the local government. Because without changing the fundamentals, the foundation of governance, then nothing will change. The land that we call Akoko Edo local government area, one of the 774 local government areas that make up the Nigerian Federation, was until 1957 an area under the colonial authority known in those days as the Kukuruku Hills Division. There are over 262,000 people, according to the 2006 population census, occupying an area of over 1,300 square kilometers, with 10 large political wards, over 13 clans and 16 sub-clans, over 50 towns and communities, a very scenic topography with breathtaking landmarks, a rich and diverse cultural heritage and history, a very hard-working and hospitable people. Headquarters in the ancient town of Igara. Yet, since the advent of civil rule in Nigeria in 1999, the people of this local government have hoped, prayed, and wished for the good life and a system that will offer them that life. Considering the fact that the region is blessed with some of the best brains the world can boast of in terms of human and natural resources and a plethora of great leaders cut across all fields of human endeavors added to the rich and solid mineral resources in the area from limestone, granite, marble, gold, iron hair to all kinds of precious stones and mineral deposits. Some analysts have argued that it is not out of place for the people to expect the best life any government can give, considering that these are the basic ingredients for creating a perfect society. It is the desire to have a local government area that would be a home that all our sons and daughters, both home and abroad, can be proud of, that informed the unflinching support the people gave to the People's Democratic Party PDP candidate, Governor Gordon Obaseki, in the last gubernatorial election in the states. Even though the governor lost the local government area to the opposition All Progressive Congress APC by a margin of a little over 2,000 votes, the jubilation that erupted when the governor was announced winner is testament to the fact that the people saw in the person of Gordon Obaseki hope and someone they could rely on to meet their aspirations. But what exactly is happening in the area today with regards to the quest of the people, like all peoples around the world and throughout history, in the pursuit of the good life they seek. What achievements have been recorded, especially since the dawn of civil rule in 1999? What are the opportunities for investment or tourism, seeing that the area is among some of the most beautiful and richest places in Nigeria? And what aspect of development in the area needs attention? The quest to answer these and more questions led me to the local government area. Akoko Edo local government area is a large area with over 50 towns and communities. The fact that we could not visit all the towns and communities and the fact also that what is obtained in one town is almost exactly what is obtained elsewhere around the local government area inspired the limitation of the coverage of this video to seven towns that fully represents the area. Now, even if we are to do a part one to five documentary series, the largeness of the local government area we still not let the entire story fit in. So we have brought to you a perfect representation of the entire local government area. 
as well as being one of the most ancient towns in the area. Igara is the headquarters of Akoko Edo local government area. Some analysts have argued that Akoko Edo local government area sits on the tripod stand of Igara, Ososo and Ibilo, these three being the major towns in the area. And true, just like the two other towns, Igara is blessed with so many natural and human resources. But the first time visitor to the town would immediately notice that, unlike in the UK and China, where industries in which youths can work and produce all kinds of goods and services, most of them for export, proliferate virtually every street of those countries. The streets of Igara, as the case is in most of all the local government area, are booming with churches, POS centers, hotels, Bet Ninja or Premier Lotto centers, and beer parlors to mention a few ventures where money is expended. A number of youths in the area that I spoke with have divergent views on the proliferation of these POS and gambling centers in the town. You must be a good forecaster. You must be able to take risk. Not everybody that plays it gets it. There are, there are people that they win every day. There are people they win once in a week. There are people they win once in a month. It all comes down to the kind of forecasting which you do on the board. Because of the fraud, many for Igara, any POS, many I'm, because most of the folks we get those accounts where they work with, where they open, where they go withdraw for POS. They don't think I those accounts go bank, go collect money. Because if they collect money, they maybe they think I The banking system in Akokoedo is not that good. Sometimes you will go to the bank, you will not see money to withdraw. They will tell you that you can withdraw only 10,000. You can withdraw 5,000. Sometimes you want to withdraw 100,000. You will just be there for hours and you will never get the money. Oba Emmanuel Adeche Saiki II, the Otaru of Igara land, believes the local government is too large and have been relatively neglected over the years. He blames these two for the state of things in the area and advised the government to look into these areas if things must improve. The Akuke Edo is very large. It's a large uh, local government. I believe that if uh, uh, another, another local government is created in Akuke I believe it can bring the faster development. Yes. Elder C.M. Ajayi an 82-year-old retired teacher and one of the most knowledgeable religious historians in the local government area on his part argues that the proliferation of churches has had a positive effect on the areas. Uh, it's quite beneficial apart from the belief that Christians should go to heaven. Uh, economically and educationally, we gain a lot. But Reverend Father Ignatius Omunagbe, a priest of the Roman Catholic Church in the area, offers a unique perspective into religion, spirituality, the proliferation of churches in the area, and the people's quest for the divine. Before advising the people of the area in particular, and Nigeria in general, to approach the Almighty God on the basis of spirituality, something which he believes will reflect positively in the society if we do so. So I want to encourage Nigerians in general, Akoko Edo people in particular, that we should grow our spirituality. That means our relationship, our individual relationship with God should continue to grow. Search for God with our hearts sincerely, not guided by rules and regulation of religion. Igara Technical School might just be a good example, although there have been some isolated reports of good management in the school, there is still a lot to be attended to in terms of infrastructural development in a school that was one time the pride of the area, producing men like Honorable Emmanuel Agbaje, the Honorable Member representing Akoko Edo Constituency 2 in the Edo State House of Assembly. And what is obtained in Igara Technical School in terms of infrastructural decay may be replicated across most government establishments in the local government area.
among some of the opportunities for investment in the area is quarrying activities, which the Nigerian Mineral and Mining Act 2007 is supposed to oversee, creating laws to govern sin. Although some of the early quarry companies in Igara have been abandoned over the years, there appears to be an upsurge in the activities of new quarry companies in the area, with its attendant hazards to workers and risks to the community in general. Our visits to some of the quarries showed that they were still on holidays from the Yuletide. But I managed to speak with some of the workers who complained, as is the case with similar ventures across the local government area, of poor working conditions and low pay. The increase of, the, of what they are doing, which is the old background, the amount of they do are too low. And before you, they don't be at money, and the amount, and the job less, they, they waste our time. Because no work, that's why we just the money down. And the crush, and it's so bad, the meal. The, the crush, it's so bad, the meal. Yes. Wow. You said joined those who want me to increase in the money. Yes, sir. Hold on, if I only want to pay me, I just put on like 1,000 so... Put it 1,000, I want to be like 1,000. But you know, say that guy to you, the guy put that. The chief, you made a few give us like 2,000. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Akoko Edo local government area has a large number of youths who are unemployed and dissatisfied with the system. While some analysts say this disaffection is being made manifest in the number of youths who take to crime or the establishment of places of worship, the Otaro of Igara advise youths to shun crime and take up entrepreneurship. Yes, my advice to our youths is that all of them should start to do something instead of going into these uh, negative things, cultism, cultism, robbery, robbery and, you know, and all sorts of negative uh, things. But they should all put their hands on the table with other people that knows about what development is, they should join them and advise government as to what to do first and what to do next. The youth themselves registered this apathy in the clearest of terms when they trooped out en masse during the NSAS protests that rocked the country in the final part of 2020 to register their displeasure with a system that doesn't seem to care about them and renewed their call on the authorities to do something about the situation in the area. Whether or not this call will be heeded is a matter for the coming days. The land of Ososo, a scenic town with sky blue streams, massive rocks of different shapes and sizes, lush countryside, and some of the best cultural practices you can find anywhere in the world is considered a tourist haven in all Akoko Edo local government area, Edo states, and perhaps Nigeria. And two major landmarks that end at this reputation is the 2,500 plus feet above sea level monoliths, the massive Oruku Rock, and the Ososo Tourist Center. A drive into the town immediately revealed beauty, and one of those who have contributed immensely of late to this beauty is a daughter of the soil herself, Honorable Anena Jemitola, a former commissioner for tourism, art and culture in Edo State, who has done so much as we were told to boost tourism in the town and have tried her best to beautify her streets. At the entrance to the town, the beautiful trees she planted on either sides of the road for the added color to the streets. When we were children, the VIP lodge there, my father used to stay there. You know, he would put us in the family house in Ipina, and he would come here with my brothers. You know, I don't know why. He was a <laughs> And they would go hunting, you know, my brothers. I also want to remind you that Ambrose Ali was here a lot with his family, you know, when he was the governor. Um, so was... Uh, General de Mudia, yeah. when he was governor. In fact, I hear he used to bring the council meetings here in 
Uh, Oyego, uh, Governor Oyego, loved this place and did a lot of work to improve on this place, but he didn't stay long enough. Eventually, he said, look, there's no money to develop the tourist centers. You know, go look for private persons to take them. We started the search for private persons, for Sokomba, for Udo, for Fuga. You know. Some showed interest. I don't want to mention names. You know, and I had this um, strategy of offering the tourism centers to people who were from that locality because I didn't think um, there was much money to be made from tourism that would attract somebody from another locality to come and invest. So you must have some emotional attachment. Yes, you know, and they were showing signs of interest in the different localities. But also so we were stuck. Everyone who showed interest came, saw the level of dilapidation. And yes, and they would come back and say, well, sorry, we can't. There's too much work to be done, too much money to be spent. Right now, it's not a time to bring private investors for tourism. So at the end, I went to him and said, look, we are leaving office, I'm going home. How am I going to face my people? Am I, they're going to confront me with the tourist center. You know, and we came to a conclusion that anyone who would want it should have it. And he said, look, if you want it, you take it. Apart from the colonial masters, former Nigerian military generals, former Edo state governors and countless foreigners alike, the Osasa Tourist Center has seen the visit of myriad people who have found comfort within its confines and relish all the enjoyment it adds to offer. And what more? Built in the 1930s in European style, the Osasa Tourist Center has VIP lodging chalets, main lodges, bush bars, recreational sections, kids' playground, a kitchen that serves both local and continental dishes, and more. It even has a kerosene-powered refrigerator from the time of the colonial masters, one of two remaining in the entire town today. Seeing how many nations of the world, through our landmark towns and cities, generate huge revenue from tourism, the former commissioner pleaded with the government for funding to make the place better than it already is. I left Ososo Tourist Center for the palace for a visit to the king of Ososo land, Oba Anselm Adeloro Obaiton, the Olososo of Ososo Kingdom. And the royal father bared his mind on a number of issues as well, especially the issue of encroachment into Ososo land by the city of Okene in Kogi State. Okene has uh, just passed a lot. Government, uh, the, uh, we say, the people they've entered, just passed into it. They really built uh, prison. Uh, Considering the fact that ours is a country where little issues can quickly ignite into dangerous passions overnight, it would only be fair and the right thing to do at this time for the governments of both states and the federal government body responsible for such matters to come together and look into the issue raised by the royal father and act upon it quickly. Like the former Honorable Commissioner, the King believes that Osasa will be far better if the government and corporate organizations invested in tourism and in our people. Osasa is not all about beauty and culture. A visit to Osasa Grammar School, Osasa, one of three premier secondary schools in Akoko Edu local government area. After St. Paul's Grammar School, Igara, and a major secondary school in Okwamiri, schools that have produced some of the biggest names to ever come out of Edo State, I was confronted with a very strong tale of contradiction. 
Like most of the schools in Akoko Edo local government area, one of the alumni of Asaso Grammar School had influenced the Nigerian Communication Commission, the NCC, to build one of their IT labs in a program in which they had selected some states to build such labs across Nigeria in Ososo, in the school premises. In an apparent proof that the government can do what it wants, when it wants, if there is the fund and the will to do so, the lab was built and equipped within a month and handed over to the school. This beautiful mini project, however, sits in the middle of an endless sea of rot, decay and dilapidation that is the secondary school today. Mr. Belo Michael Ekeme, the vice principal of the school, speaking for the principal, told us that, like schools around the Koko Edo local government area, the story of Asaso Grammar School is the same. No teachers, no learning materials, and dilapidated buildings. If you look at us, we have so many structures that all of them have been dilapidated. So you see, the, you have, even the way we used to have our line, uh, laboratory, introtech lab, lab, and all that and all that, those ones have still been lack of maintenance. Schools are made to live on their own. We give God the glory and thank him. we give thanks to our people, particularly the old uh, students' association. They are, they've done marvelously well to impact on the lives of our uh, children. Like most of the schools we visited in Akoko Edo local government area, Ososo Grammar School, Ososo, left us wondering how we hope to achieve self-sustainability and development as a people when we so blatantly disregard the most important aspects of the development of our children, which is education. The primary health care center in Yola, Ososo, shares a similar story as the officer in charge, Nurse Aluma Sunya, told us another story of decay and neglect. The outlook of the health center is very awkward. The paint is already faded, nothing. And uh, you hardly find a modern health center where we have a potato outside like this. Potato are found inside. And the windows cannot even, let's come inside. And the windows cannot even go open. Yes. The, most of the windows, the, the, the frames are eaten up by, by termites. And then uh, you can see, and you can, and they cannot even fully open. They are thieves. At least a situation where, yes, a, an air center where there are no capable windows. Even when we uh, admit uh, patients or clients, the, during the rainy season, there's a lot of cold here. The place is always cold. Cold as you can see some of the elubas are even out of, yes, yes, out of place. They are out of place. Look at them. Yes. I fixed this net myself. Yes, it was a person. This is a personal work myself. The net, so that I can admit people because people don't allow admission into this place because they said mosquito do come inside. So when I came in, I started to call the carpenter and I financed it by, by, by myself. Yes, it was a personal finance that I used. Yes, you can you can you can look at the doors, the mosquito net doors. I did them alongside so that I can add a place to what to admit. Yes, critical cases and the cases that uh, it requires hospitalization. Whereas on the one hand, government infrastructure is dilapidating, social amenities are disappearing all across the local government area. On the other hand, everywhere you turn in Ososo land, like elsewhere in Akoko Edo local government area, you find churches, many of them sitting atop huge rocky mountains, further buttressing the belief across Nigeria that the higher up the mountain the church, the closer the members to God. It is almost as if the people of the local government area are making a bold statement that since the politics and economics were failing, they were left no choice but to turn to the Almighty God in their expression of hope. I saw the opinion of two sons of Asoso land, Christopher Akinlade, a writer, and Felix Bello, a retired staff of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, and now a philanthropist, on what their thoughts are about the situation in Akoko Edo local government area today. 
comparing this time with what I used to obtain when I was growing up, there have been a lot of changes. For instance, in those days, there were no computers, none of these facilities were in existence as we know them now. In fact, when we talk of telephonic coverage or light coverage, our local government, uh, a lot of communities in our local government were actually some of the last to experience such benefits. And I found out there was nothing in this world. Now, the only thing you hold in this world is to impart on human beings. To impart on human beings. They were in that book, they said they asked the question where, who is the richest man on earth? Or where do we have the richest people I mean, the place in the earth? People were measuring uh, uh, oh yeah, Chevron, oh yeah, this, that, 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 those people with a very big head. Uh, they know. The richest place is the uh, uh, cemetery where many people die because it's not in part on human beings. And they went, they went away those. with their money, they went away with their knowledge and everything. So it's that very first thing that in part on human beings, on the community, on the society. A casual look at the town of Osasa, like elsewhere in the local government area, one would be tempted to think that the proliferation of churches would naturally take the people's mind away from their cultural practices. In reality, however, this is not the case because we ran into a group of girls performing the mandatory obiko initiation rites of the girl child, which graduates teenage girls from girlhood to womanhood. In the obiko initiation process, the teenage or sort of female child who just turned 18 will be made to walk around the town naked after having performed certain initiation rites. Today, the girls are allowed to wear beads around their waist. In those days, it is said that it was not so. And they would be made to bathe in brown powdered chalk and made to stay nine days without bathing or washing of the chalk. There is no way we were going to end the trip to Ososo without a visit to the massive Uruku and a few other of the countless natural landmarks of various shapes and sizes that the town is blessed with. The thing about Oroku is that, from a distance, the peak appears like a cone, but in truth, when you reach the top, it is actually the size of two football pitch. I joined the visitorsosor.com and we set out for the massive Oroku rock, through the long, tedious uphill footpath that led to it, at about 9 a.m. in the morning of January 2nd, 2021. At some point, my fear of height took the better of me and I could not make final journey to the peak even though there were a few 8 and 16 year old boys and girls who made it to the very top. So you've just climbed one of the highest peaks in Nigeria, yes. the Oruku, yes. that is 2,500 feet above sea level. Very correct. Sir. How do you feel climbing that kind of height? I feel excited. It's always fun coming to Oruku. Very excited. Yes, sure. Were you at any point scared of no. either climbing or coming down? No, not at all. Not at all. So what would you like to tell? Tell visitors to Ososo. Well, I would like to encourage them to come and visit Ososo because Ososo is a tourist area and very hospitable too. Are you aware you just climbed one of the highest peaks in Nigeria, about 2,500 feet above sea level? Yes. Um, How do you feel about the climb? It is very exciting and I think I feel proud. Mentally, this has boosted my psychological confidence. Were you scared at some point climbing? Yeah, I was actually. I was at some point because I just came out from POP some two months back and like ah. But being that I've been here before, this experience is always new anytime you come here. What part of the climb is more difficult for you? Is it the climb up or the climb down? Well, I think the climb up is more difficult because it takes more energy. Our trip to Ososo was very enriching. And as we took our leave from it, it was as though the scenic beauty of a town never ceased beckoning on us to come back to it. Of course, we will come back. But will those in whose hand lies the development of the town go back to the plans of its development? Pick up! Pick up! <laughs>
If you are familiar with stories of what resource exploration and exploitation has done to countries like Congo, which has the world's largest deposit of coltan and tantalum, among other mineral resources, something that organizations like the United States military heavily rely on in the manufacture of some of their military hardware, and how, ironically, that country remains one of the poorest countries and the most war-torn in Africa today. And if you learn what resource mining has done to places like Sierra Leone and even our very own Niger Delta region, then you might want to take interest in what is happening today in Dangbala, a quiet, sleepy town along the road from Igara to Ososo in Akoko Edu local government area. Like many towns in the area, Dangbala lacks basic amenities, infrastructure, and yet it is rich in mineral deposits. Recently, the town came into limelight in the local government area for a reason that so many places, especially in Africa, are so familiar with. Gold mining. Although gold mining has been ongoing in the place long before the present activities began, according to a palace chief, Felix Omo Otaru, who the king Oba Albert Agbebaku Okogwe, the Okaku one king of Dagbala, had mandated to speak to us due to his own ill health. The recent mining activities has come with its own modern challenges. I sat with the chief and a member of the royal family, Princess Philomena Legwaruji, and they gave me a picture of what is happening with relation to gold mining in Dangbala today. Dangbala is not benefited. Why am I saying this? I want to talk generally what has befallen us several days. In 1940, past man, I was not even born. My mother was a girl. It was the story I heard that gold was mined in Dambala. And uh, this white man called uh, what do you call him, his name? Uh, Passman, mined here successfully and uh, he left the community without anything. Observers say that there are many towns in Akoko Edo local government area that has not just gold but all kinds of precious mineral resources. They mentioned Ate, Ososo, and many others as among those that have gold. The appeal is that the government should ensure legal mining only and the legal accredited miners themselves should live up to their corporate social responsibilities to their host communities. The federal government should come to the aid of Dangbala and save us. We don't have anything. We are so relegated to the background. It's like we are not existing. It not belong to us. We are not Nigerians. You are here. You are the son of the land too. Consider we don't, we don't have anything. Nothing. No schools, no hospitals, no roads, no, no market. We visited one of the many mines in Dangbala and there we confirmed the story. Indeed, mining activities are going on as we speak in Dangbala. For certain concerns, we had to go on a Sunday and our visit was to one of the newly established mines out of many other ones and the journey was tedious. It was a very deep and steep gorge, the type I had never seen in my entire 37 years existence on this planet. It was like descending into the pit of hell and the climb back up was so tedious that my breath almost gave out halfway on the journey. Pascal Ekabale Usman, owner of Pascal Nigeria Limited, one of the many approved mining companies in Dagbala. He told me the local government secretariat at Igara has a record of all the miners operating in the area and that there was nothing like illegal mining going on in the town. By the, by the power vest on our royal harness, the, whole, the our royal harness, Dagbala community, Albert Okogbe, the Okaku one of Dagbala community, 
assiduously work to make sure that all illegal money had put to, to, to stop. And he forwarded the matter to the local government, of which the local government has already subscribed all the workers into this stage that all the company that we register has a license to have a photograph, their details of where they come from, their local government, and their phone number. You can see the what the local government has just done. So whether you are an AUSA or you are an EDG, you have to do this before you call, you enter the, side, the money site. But the palace appears to disagree, and it raises concern about the influx of all kinds of people, many of whom they claim are not even Nigerians to start with, to the town. They raise more concerns about the pressure of the influx of these people on infrastructure, security, and the loss of farmlands due to mining activities. A motorcyclist who spoke to me off camera told me how the number of boys and men who are daily flocking into the town for mining activities are growing more than the entire population of the youths of the town put together two to one. The full and is all the charge that are here. They don't have any background. Some of them, they, they just, you know, they lie anywhere. They sleep around. They sleep anywhere. They, they so far they can just sleep. That's their own. Tomorrow morning they wake up. They are not depending on anybody. You know the government we have, they are waiting for where they will hear that Dambala is set on fire then before they start running here. We don't want it to be set on fire. They should come to our aid. They should come immediately and save our people. Let those who want to mind mind and let the community benefit. Of what good is it if miners ride on the backs of host communities to pump wealth through their sweat and blood, irrespective of where they find the resources, all because they want to get the fullness of the resources of those lands and yet give back nothing to the population, or perhaps they even give to just a few of the populace. If for nothing, should the sheer moral of it not cause the miners to act in the favor of the people as well as their own self-interest? <laughs> One of the most beautiful places in the whole of Akukoedo local government area is Somorika. As a matter of fact, the entire local government area is embedded in an undulating topography, also known as the Somorika Hills region. The endless collection of massive rocks of various shapes and sizes, the streams, the enchanting caves, the rich culture and very hospitable people that left me wondering which is more blessed between Ososo and Somorika are some of the beautiful things that makes the town so welcoming and beautiful. Although we could not get the king of Basule A.T. Idaye, the Ima 4 of Somorika to talk on camera, the highly intellectual king off camera told us about the rich culture and history of his people, their historic ties with the ancient Benin Kingdom, which goes back ages. Like fellow royal fathers across many of the towns in the local government area, Obaidaye called on the government to pay better attention to Akukoedo local government area. The philosophy of the people of Somorika which somehow mirrors the golden rule as propounded by Jesus Christ in the Holy Bible, which is to love one's neighbor as oneself, is made manifest in the major shrine in the town, the Olo Kuhaibe Shrine. Olo Kuhaibe translates to love your neighbor as yourself. And the shrine, apart from enforcing strict compliance to this rule, portends goodness to all peoples, both indigenous of the town and strangers alike. I visited the shrine and there I learned a great deal about its functions and how a number of big names like former governor of Edo State, Adam Soshomole and many more are visited to felicitate with the people during their Shrine Day Festival. When 
Worthy of note also is the fact that Sumorika is blessed with big names like the former deputy speaker of the Edo State House of Assembly, Mr. Yekini Idaye, who is also from the place. I visited the Uwe Notaru cave, one of the many caves in the town. Like many of the landmarks in the Akukwedo local government area, the journey to this cave was long and tedious. But when I reached the place, I was in awe of the beauty I saw. As I took the step into that cave, a large expanse the size of three average rooms with large stones neatly sliced into equal halves, sitting as though someone had arranged executive chairs in the living room with the rays of light from the sun making their way into the basement of the cave like bullets from a machine gun, from slight openings on the dome and large stones hanging loosely on openings overhead. As if they would fall any minute, the cave presented for me a really enchanting scenery of beauty and wonder. Though very hot and sunny outside, before we descended into the cave, the inside was as cold as it was dark, despite the rays of the sun, and our words echoed as we spoke. You could say the same thing of the mountains, the hills, the streams, just name it, of Sumorika. It was all beauty and nature at its finest when we visited. But as beautiful as the town of Sumorika is, I can confirm, and sadly so too, that there is absolutely no infrastructure or social amenities in the town. The people rely on neighboring Igara town for electricity. They had to construct their own road with concrete, a road that is so narrow that it may not be able to accommodate two cars at a time. A road which disappears into dusty, large footpaths at some point on our journey. And there is no network, no hospital, factories. In fact, there are no restaurants in Somorika town. And most of the youths hang around daily, doing nothing and hoping the world outside will hear their voices and come to their rescue. There are others who must travel out to Igara and other major towns in the local government area every day to work if they must make ends meet. We need so many things, but the major things we need is road, network, anyone they can do for us out of the two. We used to, sometimes we used to climb rock, and make up we don't have a network or we go to Igara. The first problem we are facing here is road. We don't have a good road. The good road that we enable the farmer to take their produce to the market. We don't have good road. We don't have network that we can easily communicate with others. Because these people are here, you only get a steady network if you want to communicate to people outside Somorika and outside the country, you will that climb a high mountain where you can really get a strong network. You can't sit in your room and begin to communicate your people outside the community. Except you climb his high top place or you go to the nearby town. Somorika has the potentials not only to, to change the face of tourism in Akoko Edo local government area. I can assure you that it also has the prospects of being one of the hubs for tourism and resource exploration in the area. Sometimes around 2013, the director of productions at the Nigerian Institute for Oil Palm Research told the world that she had debunked insinuations that Malaysia had obtained its first palm fruits or seedlings from Nigeria before it started growing palm trees from which they are today one of the world's largest palm oil exporters. Whether or not the people who went to town with that story were right or Christy Okwaiugu, the NIFO director for productions was right. The fact remains that Nigeria 
should be one of the largest palm oil exporters in the world, and yet it is not. Enwa community in Akokoe local government area, a town renowned for its rich and nutritious palm oil, is an example of what sheer perseverance, even while working under very favorable conditions, can do when a people faced with little or no motivation, choose to make the most of what they have. Engwa community is a shining example today what potentials lay in palm oil production if the government or corporate organizations take the initiative. Despite the realities of dwindling palm plantations across the local government area, Despite the fact that there are no social amenities like possible water, good road networks from the farms to the town, no machines, no support whatsoever from the government or private sector. Some of the largest oil production factories are in Enwa, built by the people themselves. Joy Sunday is one of the palm oil producers who work at the big factory. She ran me through the process of making palm oil. So what do I You cut baga. You select baga, you fit her, you go clean well. Then you put her for drum, you put fire, cook her, you go down. The next day, pack her for ground, you go cool. Carry her, you ground her, wash her for water. Come out the oil, put her for drum, you put fire. You fit her the head, come out. The dirty, you go down. Then the oil go down, so you pack the oil, cook her again. I visited one of the palm oil markets where the finished products are taken from the factories. And there I found that the process of displaying and distributing the products appear a bit not too protected, something that is evident from the countless barrels of oil exposed to the elements, especially in this period of COVID-19. The government and the private corporations can come in and make palm oil production a huge business. Not just in Enwa, but in the entire Akoko Edo local government area, as there are analysts who insist that Okwe, another community in the local government area, are very good producers of oil as well. Akoko Edo has the potential of being a massive major oil hub in all of Africa, contributing to the nation's earnings, if we capitalize on this opportunity and take it. The list of what the government can do in enhancing palm oil production in Akoko Edo local government area goes on and on. We need water, clean water wow. with LG. LG. We don't get LG to the grad the baga. We took the suffer for LG. More LG we need. Then the others water where we use, we need clean water, boil. Boil the water, the other they the clean more more. We know see people whether they buy the oil. We need people where they go they buy the oil for our market. Like Enwa community, all across Akoko Edo local government area, there's virtually no community one tons that one would not find mineral resources. Sometimes not one, not two or even three, where one would not find also that the people who live there have one or more skills, something they are known for. And then the icing on the cake being the rich culture and history and the very hardworking and hospitable people in all the Akoko Edo local government area. Why all these ingredients have not translated to the sort of leadership that will bring about the sort of quality life for the citizens of the area that is expected of societies with all this combination remains a matter for experts. His Royal Highness Obadiyas Lawani, the Okogbe of Ojalan, is generally respected as one of the most learned kings in all of Akoko Edo local government area. I sat with him for a talk, and one of his first sentences confirmed what I had heard about him as a philosopher king. He said to me, the eyes cannot see itself. For me, those words were as deep as they were insightful. And they are troubling when it came to the subject of why the people of Oja were losing interest in poetry. Whatever an environment understands, whatever a, 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 a family, a group, an entity knows how to do very well, same becomes their power 
in the nearest tomorrow. If it like Oja, that uh, worldwide is known to have been very good in history, uh, poetry making, till tomorrow, an average Oja woman, and even some inquisitive men, they can still make the pot. If we take note of the way and manner in which China has developed its poultry industry into a market of variety of products and use, how they have built that industry and thus become specialists in the craft, thereby earning millions from exports, we will feel the urgent need to rescue Oja poultry from the downward spiral its journey has taken over the years. And sadly too, some of the best potters in Oja today are old women, from whom the younger generation do not want to learn the heart of poetry, leaving us wondering what will happen to the craft when these old women go home. If the fear of the disappearance of Oja poetry is palpable, the story is not any different in the stress the women go through just to make gari, a staple food in the area made from cassava. We ran into some of the, of the women and noticed that the women still relied on the ancient, tedious method of making gari to make the staple food today. Smoke will enter our eye. After prayer, it will really help it. They should help us so that they will reduce our suffering. The call, as usual, is on government to help better the process and help better their lives. <laughs> We left Oja and on our way back to Igara, we had a stop at one of the biggest evidence of drain in government's ports over the years in Akoko Edo local government area. One of the biggest frustrations, the most visible confirmation of the same, hunger in the midst of plenty, the Hojirami Dam. Hojirami Dam is the gigantic water supply plant built by the late Dr. Ogbemudia's government and commissioned by the Nigerian military leader at the time, General Yakubu Gowon, in 1974. That year, the freshly minted dam with over 45 dedicated and adequately renumerated staff workforce, well-equipped water treatment high lift plants and solid infrastructure that was the attraction of tourists had the capacity to and indeed began to supply residents in Igara and the entire local government area and even parts of Onwa East and Onwa West and Esako local government areas with fresh portable water and great hopes that the dam had put an end to the age-long water needs of the people of the region. Today, all that is left is but a distant memory as residents, even in the home of the dam itself, go about every day in search of clean portable water. The lucky communities depend on few residents who own boreholes within their communities for their water needs. The unlucky ones like Akuku community depend on numerous promises from politicians and on streams in the area, a thing that can lead to waterborne illnesses. Farm the plants. Beside the obsolete, dilapidated, and rusty equipment that litter the premises of the dam today, one of the major problems hampering the supply of water, besides lack of electricity, is the lack of procurement of the much needed water treatment chemicals for the plants, such as hydrated lime, halum, and chlorine. And there are whispers that money is meant for that purpose often find their way into private bank accounts. I sat with the seven remaining officials who still work at the dam today. Though they refuse to speak in front of the camera or show me around the dam premises, all they had was nostalgic feelings about the good old days. Despite praising Governor Obaseki's prompt payment of salaries, they insist that the staff quarters is in shambles, that the last time the dam was dredged was 45 years ago, a thing that often leads to flooding of the communities around it when it rains. 
And with this, I record reading stories of how in the 1980s, flood from the dam swept away almost half of Akuku community. Today, the usual five yearly maintenance of the dam has long been abandoned. Yet the population that relies on the dam for their water need keep increasing by the year. Some of the staff showed me where they sleep at night, and all I could do was feel a sense of urgency towards fixing the system. A recent report in the newspapers quoted the Seventh National Assembly as releasing a whopping sum of 1.5 billion naira to the Niger Data Development Commission (NDDC) for its resuscitation and procurement of chemicals for the dam. But sadly, the amount, like many before it, was allegedly frittered away by corrupt officials in charge of the project. Mr. Legbeti Wilson is an engineer from Akoko Edoluku government area who resides in Lagos. He throws more light on what he thinks the problem is. Now you mentioned Ojiramidan functionality before. Today now it's not functioning. Why? Because you see some governments, we don't believe in government of continuity. Some will come, they will continue from. Another one will come and say, no, I need my own fresh project. If not, I will not have a remuneration for those ministries. We have. For me, the dam itself, so many of those machines that hope to have been supplying water, distributing water to all the local government have been vandalized. There's one, there's, we have about uh, 27, 16.5 uh, horsepower pumping machines. Those machines, the product they, employ, they, they brought in that time, the, pro the product they, 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 they installed is Luwara. Mm -hmm. And the cost of that Luwara now, one is 11.5 million naira, one pump. So who will take who will take care of those prices? Who will bear the who will bear the body? So even uh, the state government who cannot even repair ordinary five kilometer road will come and embark on 11, uh, 11 million, 11 point something million horsepower pump just to pump water to us also from uh, Ojiramidan. Of course they wouldn't do that. I think the Petroleum Training Institute's PTI was domiciled in worry, part because the city is an oil rich city. And today, we can all see the benefits of that institute to that region. Imagine that a national geology university is founded and domiciled in a Koko Eduluku government area because of the countless rocks and mineral deposits in the region. Imagine what good it will do to our people. The Otaro of Igara believes such an institution can be cited anywhere so long as it is cited in the local government area. First of all, this will give us a higher institution in Akuku. It could be cited anywhere in Akuku. But like the school, which is still in its proposal state, or the Avant Cement Plant, Ayegule Power Station, Langpese Crocodile Lake, and many other countless opportunities to generate revenue scattered across the local government area, the region has continued, it would seem, to pay deaf ears to the echoes of the rock hills of the Kokoroko. <laughs>